My seat, please. This is Spirit Airlines. We only have 30 seats for Thanksgiving. Sold out. That stinks. Just, Just like, like this, this movie. movie. Welcome to the Real Watchlist Plus podcast. Your favorite movie reviews, now raw, unfiltered, and almost completely unedited. It's the candid, behind-the-scenes conversations you've been waiting for. Today, we're serving up a special Thanksgiving treat. Join Debbie and Joe as they dive into the holiday classic, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So grab a plate, sit back, and enjoy the show. This is the Real Watchlist Plus podcast. Happy Thanksgiving. All that Neil Page, played by Steve Martin, wants to do is to get home for Thanksgiving. But when bad weather cancels his flight, he decides on other means of transportation. As well as bad luck, Neil is blessed with the presence of Del Griffith, played by John Candy, a shower curtain ring salesman and all-around blabbermouth who is never short of advice, conversation, bad jokes, or company. And when he decides that he is going in the same direction, they decide to share their precarious journey. So we want to take a few moments to recognize this wonderful place that we are doing our episode. Irrefutably. As you probably remember, if you're a follower and subscriber of our channel, we used to do our episodes at the Art Factory Studios in Patterson, New Jersey. And uh, if you want to type in Art Factory Studios, you'll find a lot, a lot of juicy gossip, a lot of tea about what happened there. So they're shut down, not by choice, kind of, but... Plus, because of that, it, plus, if of, you want to put on the eyewitness news clip, you can see our producers on yes, film. Yes, that's a little bit of tea to drop. Yeah. You can actually see what our producers look like as they're exiting quickly out of the Art Factory Studios. So, needless to say, we're in my hometown of Roseau Park, New Jersey, at this wonderful photography studio. We want to take a moment to thank Lighthouse Photography for allowing us to use their studio today. As a husband and wife team of over 15 years of experience, Lighthouse Photography brings your most cherished moments to life through their passion for stunning photography and creative graphic design. From breathtaking wedding photos to heartfelt portraits, they'll capture every detail with unmatched precision. Their dedication to excellence and personalized service has made them... <laughs> Sorry, podcast people. Their dedication to excellence and personalized service has made them a trusted partner for countless clients. Check out their work at Lighthouse Photography. Lighthouse is spelled L-Y-T-E-H-O- U-S-E photography.com and follow them on Instagram for a glimpse into the world of artistry. Lighthouse Photography, where memories are captured for a lifetime. And now back to our show. Let's do our votes because we can uh, get some uh, conversation well, we're to talk started. About what scenes we like. No, nope. voting first, Debbie's right. Debbie's right again. There you go. I'm following the outline because I can look at it like a flounder sideways. A flounder has eyes on one if side. If you're wondering I'm why people listening or watching, I could hardly see because I got a pie in the face at the last episode. If you want to see that pie, watch our National Love episode and you'll understand why. Well, I've got mm. double glasses so on, I can't so see. I'm in a fog. I got whipped cream all over my face. So anyway, we have our Should little we do our paddles. Votes? We have our paddles. And so, on the count of... Three for planes, trains, and automobiles. Thanksgiving movie. Turn it now. Wow. wow. I love oh. it. <laughs> and I thought I was going to get yelled at and oh, get maybe get... a pie thrown in my face because <sighs> people do like this film. Oh, a lot of people like this Critics film. Critics do like this film. Rotten Tomatoes like this film, but I think no, I'm going to get a tomato Rotten thrown Rotten Tomatoes, out there. please. Uh, <laughs> So, so anyway, yeah, what do you yeah. have on there? Did you put an airplane? I put an airplane, a train, and an automobile. And look like a little dog running on the bottom. All right, so a six. Six, five, dead. Wow, I We are I going thought, against the grain, and I'm eat, my I score is even were lower than be you. Like a nine. And I'm an eighties kid, as you could tell. I know. I got my Walkman on I know. and ready to roll here. Yeah. So Why? now let's talk about what let's you do about, like or well, you don't let's like. Let's talk about, about the movie. It. Let's talk about let's some talk scenes about that, that got our attention. I eked out my score. I find that it was extremely formulaic. And although I do like John Candy, I've always liked him, rest his soul. You know, he was another one of those comedians that was heavy and gave it his all. From the time of Jackie Gleason to, you know, Chris Farley, they jumped around like maniacs and God forbid the poor things, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know that John Candy was really worried because his whole family had heart problems. Right. So he was worried about having a heart attack and he ultimately did. And I do like Seymour. 
Martin, even from the time he was on SNL, he, SNL, he did King Tut. I think he's a good comedian. He's a good writer. I think he wrote Picasso with the Lapin Agile, which was serious work as well. But let's land the plane on the scenes. Yeah, the but I think that I found it, like I knew everything that was going to happen. What I did like was the opening segment with the freneticism of his trying to get through traffic in New York. Well, freneticism, if they want to use that as the word of the week, okay, that's yeah. fine. Frenetic freneticism, okay. whatever they want to put up, the producers. Or maybe they don't want to put it up. I don't know. But I like that he was running around. I like the opening. I like the shot of Kevin let's, Bacon. Well, let's, let's talk about the opening. Okay. So here we go. Scene opens. Neil is an ad exec, right. ad marketing exec in New York City mm -hmm. on a business trip. He's with his colleague and they're waiting for a client. Go through all these different posters, these kind of art pictures. I guess they're making their pitch on which piece of uh, marketing, piece of artwork that they're going to use. Yeah, the old school next... with the pointer and everything. Yeah, right. Like, I and, love that and, stuff. That part I love. Yeah, because me too. I love watching watching like the old school. This is the 80s. It's not so yes. old. I'm an 80s kid. I'm a Gen Xer, went through the 80s, so I could appreciate it. And he's waiting, he's waiting. He wants to get home for Thanksgiving. It's only a couple days before Thanksgiving. He lives in Chicago. So he has to get on a plane and you see the airplane ticket. Another funny thing, because the airplane ticket is, you don't see that anymore. I know. You know, it used to be just hand an airplane ticket. Now you got to go on the phone, the security, all yeah. that stuff. The executive is not making a decision. Who's played by William Winden, which is kind of cool. I didn't even know he that. He was on, well, people would know from Murder, She Wrote if they watched oh. it. I don't know if the Gen yeah. Z or millennials or any that watch Murder, She Wrote. But he had a long, long it. career, William Winden. And I love to see him in the movie. So I just had to interject that. So finally, he's let go and he's trying to find a cab. They're trying to find a cab in New York City right before the Thanksgiving holiday season, or as it's ready to start, is impossible. Anyone who knows New York. So he's trying to get a cab. He's getting cabs stolen from him and he's just frantically looking for a cab. All of a sudden he sees a free cab and that's where he sees Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Tiny little part, but I mean, everybody knew Kevin Bacon. I think, I don't know if Kevin Bacon started in like a... What was it? Friday the 13th? Was he in? Oh, Footloose. Yeah, but Footloose might have come after because that was a lead role for him. I think he got his throat gored out with an underneath no. the bed. If I'm wrong, but Footloose I think it's Friday before the 13th. That. Check before that, Friday folks. Friday the 13th? Who's right? I think Friday Footloose? the 13th was first, okay, but no, I no. could be wrong like I mm. always am. And then Joe has a big gold star that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. He loves that stuff. So now they both eyeing the same cab. Yeah. And there's this running chase for this cab through New York City. And it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, it is. Um, um, you're not expecting Kevin Bacon. He doesn't have a character name. He doesn't speak. And I think that's a funny scene because everybody has had a thing where they're so late and they try to get things and everything in your day goes wrong. You should have never got out of bed. And that was really, really, that was good. I yeah. like that yeah. scene a lot. But then he doesn't get the cab. Well, he sort of gets the cab, but then he's he's fighting. That's where he has his first interaction with Dell because finally when he gets a cab, Dell, who he doesn't know at that point, mm -hmm. steals the cab. And as you and as you see, there's this, this one scene where it's, it's wet, it's snowy, kind of like snowy wet kind of vibe. There's, I don't know if you realize this, there's a uh, shower curtain ring on the ground in the puddle. Pay close attention, folks, for you, like people who love this movie. That was funny. That was good. Yeah. Okay. So we set the stage for this kind of running chase to get back home. Well, I thought the momentum in the film wasn't bad. And I think in comedy, momentum... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. All right. I don't think the mo momentum in comedy is very important. Mm -hmm. You have to have that continuing. It can't drag off. It can't. And I thought that it was pretty good until they got to the cheap motel. Mm -hmm. And even that was kind of good because, you know, the dirty tiles and the ripped curtain and the shitty motel. But then I think the momentum fell off after that. And it just became like any other buddy movie where you know things are going to be hap hapless. And then at the end, everything is going to go well and blah, blah, blah blah, blah, blah. So that's where I wasn't thrilled with it. Mm -hmm. I actually said, okay, I see where this is going. You I got to watch it and review it. What happened, totally happen, right? predictable. Totally. It's like, I was like, I could have wrote this. Right. We could have wrote it. Written we it. We could have wrote we should. it. Producers, Listen to my grammar. We could have wrote it. Yeah. Let's, written. Let's written. put together a screenplay for a Thanksgiving movie. Because there's not many Thanksgiving no. movies out there. No. And to John Hughes's credit, they did this movie based on an experience that he had, we'll talk about that a little later, can't find Thanksgiving movies. There's really nothing out there. Well, if we're going to write a Thanksgiving movie, we have to write it for Hallmark because they'll snatch up anything. No, you know, Christmas, Lifetime? Thanksgiving, please. You know, Hallmark wants it. But um, I mean, Steve Martin and John Candy, I don't know. I, I like them both, but I didn't find that, you know, I really cared. I could have mm -hmm. shut it off mm -hmm. and I could have put something else on. Right. And because we had to work on this film, I, you know, we I'm not forced. watching it as a normal no. person. Well, uh, you know, again, 
John Hughes has a lot of great 80s films. Yeah. I loved his, I, I, I loved his, I still do love his stuff. But with this film, you know, again, now they're, they're, they're on the plane. They go from LaGuardia to Chicago and there's this banter. He actually meets Dell again. He realizes, oh, you're the guy who stole my cab. I paid a guy to bribe them to get that cab. And once I turn, you're in it. Dell's this kind of like goofy, nice, you know, he's one of the people that I think like, like almost like leeches onto you and they want to talk to you all the time. And when you're, pissed and you're like trying to get home you don't want anyone talking to you right but he like engages in this friendly banter and then yeah. he ends up sitting next to him in the airplane and a lot of reviewers have made mention of that particular scene yeah it's I, too yeah, it's but, too but then I go, so let me go to another scene because again it's this whole little chase they're on the plane they can't get to where they're going because of the snow because of the weather they land in wichita like who the hell is wichita do you remember the bed scene when they're in bed in together? In the hotel? Yes, the first and bed motel. scene. motel. It's not a hotel, a motel. Right. Yes, I do remember it. Yes. Again, they're, you know, they're locked in this situation because they can't find a right place to go, place to sleep. But, you know, Dell has these people. He's got his people who he's known because he's a salesman. He sold shower curtains. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's pretty much well-versed of these kind of weird, kind of this little areas that people don't normally go to. In the bed, they're sleeping together because there's only one bed, only one one space left and then they wake up in the morning where Dell is kind of reaching same over same old same old it's like which is I, I could have predicted the that three stooges you know right and then there's a, the classic line that everyone recites you know you have the pillow between my legs that's not a pillow oh no so, yeah. oh, Chris what do they do ew it's gay it's gay yeah. it's gonna, but get real it doesn't I offend mean, me but it's like ugh maybe again, Lowe's check that box wasn't off. around then I don't know but Rickles was. Didn't people buy shower curtain rings in the store? Why do they need a salesman? I mean, it was like well, bizarro. It, yeah, it didn't, you know, and then it's like, okay, what's next? What I liked, what I did like about it, well, disliked and liked, the scene where now they're trying to get a ride to get to a train station so they could get the, you know, so check mark. Okay, we did planes. Okay, next, let's get a train. They interact with Gus or Gus's son. And he comes out of the pickup truck, of course, the pickup truck. The scene where he shakes his hand, mm -hmm. he Gus, uh, the son introduces himself. And I'm thinking, I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the character and he's got the kind of the hillbilly look, you know, but his face is clean. And I'm thinking, yeah, and I just come had all on. things like that. When you zero in on something, you just say, "How could they do this when they have all this money to make this movie? They have two top people in comedy at the time, and yet they miss things." Here's another thing: I thought this scene was funny with the car, and when the car catches on fire, but the car was the car was toast. Mm -hmm. But yet they get in it and they drive away. That right. car would have never driven after yeah. that, and it was just stuff like that. I'm going. I kept thinking the whole time I was watching it of all the other films that were like buddy road pictures mm -hmm. that were so far superior to this mm -hmm. and yet they had John Hughes they had John Candy they had Steve Martin they had a big budget what why would it be flat and I'm glad you felt that way mm -hmm. because I thought I was going to get like rocks thrown at me or people like commenting like Debbie you don't even know what you're doing how could you say a six for that movie well I also watched it with my husband and right. I'm like I'm waiting I watched I'm wait it with my cat what's your cat what's your cat think Oh, uh, she was nonplussed. Really? Yeah, she didn't care. She pussied out? She didn't care. She was watching the skunk out the back door, eating oh, its dinner. Okay, stanky. Yeah. Um, but my, even my, my husband's like, well, why are we watching this? I'm like, well, I have to watch it. Plus, I always want to watch it because I've seen all of John Hughes' other movies, right. majority of them, and this is one of those films that, and I don't know why I hadn't watched it because I like Steve Martin and I like John Candy. Right. And we'll talk about them more and when we I get to the And I had never seen it as well. We, got, we were told to see yeah, this. Yeah, which I'm glad I did because it's one of those things like everyone should see. Now I've seen it, now I probably won't see it again. But anyway, one of the scenes I did like because the director uses actors and actresses from his other movies. Uh, so they're recognizable. So if you're a follower, if you're a fan, you, you recognize. The one that I loved the most was Edie McClug. Did I pronounce her name right? Edie McClure. Know, sir. I'm sorry, Edie. I'm really bad with names. In the scene where he's renting a car and the oh, car yeah. is missing. And that was that was a little funny. And he's and the bus pulls away. Like right, that. right. And the bus pulls away, and he walked all the way to the rental car place in the airport. The receptionist, Edie, 
is on the phone and she's talking to her sister and they're talking about Thanksgiving and you make this and you make that and, oh. and I'm watching her and I'm like, that's Ferris Bueller. That's the secretary from Ferris Bueller. Oh, okay. I so, didn't you know, know, I didn't, he's yeah. a bad dude or whatever the line is from Ferris Bueller and, you know, approaches, she walks with, she has a nice smile on her face, very welcoming. He starts F-bombing like crazy. Now, I'm not used to seeing Steve Martin F-bomb. So it was like a pullback for me. Yeah. I have it's noted that this that particular too. scene had 18 bucks in it. And because of that- In 60 seconds. Right. And because of that, it was rated R. Right. And what's interesting is that normally his films are rated PG to get a larger audience. And so marketing wise, it's like, wait a minute. Now you just you just remove the whole segment of your potential box office ticket sales. Yeah. For kids. Um, after he goes on his diatribe about fuck this, fuck that. you know, And she's like, where's your slip? Your rental slip. I tore it up. And she goes, you're fucked. I mean, that was funny as hell. I like her delivery. I liked her more than him. Yeah. I in that particular the, yeah, scene because she has such annoying. a way of delivering those lines. They were both annoying lines. to me. But let me They're just say something about... I love her. Let me, let me just I say love something. I mean, I love the movie, but I love her. Yeah, no, her, she was fine, but uh -huh. I find the two characters were like, ugh, oh, you know? Mm -hmm. But let me say something about the past and the rating system. Uh, before this, a few years before that, if you said... At the F word once, mm -hmm. you got an R rating. Oh. Then they changed the rating system that you have to say it three times now in order to get an hmm. R rating. So this just show you how times have oh changed as far as just I wonder what like, it is now. I don't know, 12 maybe? <laughs> I don't know. But they don't have X anymore, you know, because X oh, is really? out. No, because you don't have X in theaters anymore. You got whatever. I'm not even going to say what's... the. The people that watch that stuff, they know where to look. But it isn't in Debbie theaters anymore. Know. No, I'm very pure. I know nothing. Only what I've heard is a critic over. And it's actually 40 years for me this year. I have 40 years what? That you were an X-rated movie? No, that I have been reviewing films oh. and writing oh, about Oh, next them. month? 40 years. Ooh, we have a, have a party. Party people. Do we have a month. budget for a party? Yeah, you tell. And it's silent down I've there. Reached they didn't the, I've reached the peak of everything being on the real Watchless Plus. This is the epitome. Yes. This and is the this is the you know the Tower of Babel. This is the crest of yes. everything. I've reached even when it. people say we have delusions of grandeur, <laughs> we're still the best. <laughs> okay. Thank you, husband, for saying that. To us. <laughs> and I want to see if he watches this. I want to see if he watches this because I don't know if he even watches our episodes anymore. But anyway, <laughs> oh, don't even say that. He did subscribe though. So anyway, so that's too, that's how we feel. And. You know, about the film. I, the film but, was like, wh how long is it? Let me stop. How many more minutes does it have? You know, I, I just felt, uh, right. I don't need, so, I really so need to see it again. You have these chase scenes. You have, now you go from the trains, you go to the car, yeah. car brims up. You know, they go the wrong way on the highway. You know, Correct. Like, what uh, it sort of amounts to is an end scene where they finally separate because Neil's trying to break away from him. And there's this one scene where they're together and there's, kind of getting to know each other. They're rooming together. They're having a few drinks. Dell pulls out his wife's photo and it's in a picture frame and he puts it out on the, the bed counter. Immediately when I, I, that came out, I turned to my husband, I go, She's, she's dead. dead. Yeah, because he's too nice a guy to have a divorce or to have her leave him. Right. So, you know, she's dead. Right. Immediately. Or if she it wanted to like have a picture so of her, it'd be in the bad. wallet. You know, it'll be somewhere. It was like know. script writing like, 101. I, I could have wrote that. I'm like, geez, Louise. Exactly. They finally depart. Dell is sad, but Steve wants to get home. As he's on the train and they're saying their final goodbyes, he's, he's sitting there and he's flashbacking. And even the flashbacks were kind of like, TV-ish, okay? And then he's starting to feel good and, you know, feel like nostalgic and, geez, and then he realizes that... Yeah, I might Del change my a score to, to a four. <laughs> I, I didn't We've never I, seen that go down. Yeah, no, folks. because I just feel like everybody was really going to be, and I, I don't care what people say. In my other job, I just destroyed something that was on Netflix, and my boss called me and said, Debbie, you're so cool the way you just don't care. But I did about this because I know people do like it, and I don't want to make them feel that their taste is so horrible that I'm going to destroy something they care about. Well, we do have someone that does think highly of this movie, and our producer, Darren, who before we did this episode... yeah. Shared with me, because when she asked me, because we don't talk about this in advance, folks. We don't talk about our feelings, but we got, we were just bantering back and forth. And she's like, oh, planes, trains, and automobiles. And my body reaction was like, mm. And she goes, you didn't like it? I'm like, Never I saw love it. that movie. Or last scene, flashback, Neil goes back, discovers that Dell has nowhere to go. He's homeless. So there's the change in the whole 
movie dynamic because well that could you be didn't, a yeah. mini a subdued watered down with a fire hose arc <laughs> okay um and then he's invited home and you have the typical family waiting and you have the the brick face home that of course john hughes loves to use home yeah, alone yeah looks all like home others. alone it's not the same um, one now no it's not um and then face john candy's face with a smile in movie. Yeah, and everybody hugs and yeah, it's all Paul great. Young's and we cover all version of Every Time You Go Away, You Take a Piece of Me With You. Oh boy. I have one little thing. I know we're going to go to the cast later, but did you know who the wife was in it? I do, but what? Deanna Douglas, Mike Douglas's wife. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, Michael Douglas. Not. That was his wife. That mm. was for years and years. Oh, I, I must say, I don't think she was that great of an actress. I didn't think she was that great either. No, I don't think she was and that pretty. And who is it? Was it Joey Lawrence that was in one of the kids or one yeah, of the last kids? Yeah, uh, the whole like, thing uh, to me is like a throwaway. I'm not going to put the kitty litter on top of it in the garbage, but I will throw it in the garbage. I don't care. cinema sip for this episode is as unpredictable as the movie playing strange at automobiles it's the 1980s classic a long island iced tea mm. it's extremely popular in the 1980s and it matches the chaotic unpredictability and energy of the movie are we gonna clink we're gonna clink okay Eat. i would think it would be gruel after seeing this thing mm. we're gonna need this all right oh, oh boy. please um it rose to its peak of popularity during the 1980s, making it a fitting choice for a movie released in 1987. It's full of unexpected twists and travel woes. It's loaded with stuff, just like that movie, but I don't know. And you're giving it to me. Of, and I'm giving oh, it to boy. you. It has a surprising, surprising number. It has, excuse me, try it again. This film has a surprising number of spirits, which make it a refreshing and delicious drink. So let me tell you what's in this Long Island iced tea. Hmm. Whoa! Well, it this has, is a real leprechaun drink. It has three quarter ounce vodka, three quarter ounce white rum, three quarter ounce gin, same with tequila and triple sec, and three quarter ounce of fresh lemon juice. You could add simple syrup. I don't think it needs simple syrup because it's already got its sweetness in there. You put some cola on top, a lemon wedge for garnish, and there you have it. Put it in a highball high glass with some ice, your garnish uh, mm. with a lemon. And a sip away. Let me. Well, I've had them in like apple bees and stuff. This Oof. tastes ten times stronger. What Ugh. did you do? Because they water down was their I drinks. Distract, apple bees. Was I distracting you or something when you made Bitches this? Because this bees. thing, I can't drink. Same thing as TGIF. I think they closed them down. Then they go bankrupt because they watered down their drinks. It's too strong for me. Okay. I'll be like um, dead. Despite its name. There is no tea in this. The cola is what makes it look like a tea, but surprisingly, I didn't realize this was no iced tea. In, in was Long it invented in Long Island? I forget. Yeah, I was sure. so drinking it and it went if right we say to it enough, my people brain. Believe it. Yeah, it was invented in Long Island. Oh, Long, Long, Island. Island. Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. Okay, so homie, flashback to the 1980s with a righteous Long Island iced tea. Good drink. With a movie that is totally rad 80s planes, trains, and automobiles. I'm going to give this to our producer so she doesn't like this movie as much. After she drinks it, she's just going to like not watch it. I'll give it to her Thanksgiving morning. Here we go, because I know you're being tortured. I'm dying here. So. You look remarkably sexy in that pirate's outfit. I do. Outfit. I think I have a side thing that I'm going to show up and ring a doorbell and, and maybe make some money. Anyway, I borrowed this costume and from my friend Augie, and it was so perfect because I'm a pilot for the plane section of this movie. And I really love it. And it's really comfortable, too. How about you, turkey head? I got a, my head up a turkey's ass. So I am the Christmas. The Christmas, oh my God. Are you a turducken? It's that Long Island iced tea. I'm a turducken. You're a turducken. <laughs> You're a stuffed turkey. Yeah, I'm a stuffed turkey. Uh, I am an 80s turkey. So I oh have my 80s sweater, my little buttoned up sweater. There you go. Put my uh, collar, a uh, high collar and I got a corduroy pants that you probably I don't know if you could see it or not I am bunching up on the bottom folks so if I look a little bit trouble art that's it's where because I'm bunching again in. I brought my Walkman <laughs> not a Sony Walkman I can't find it but a Jensen Walkman the knockoff and uh, I got my Rubik's Cube I got my Magic 8 Ball which we will use later oh. all popular items during the 80s so I will say that I'm sweating turkey balls in this mask so I'm going to take it off 
So gobble, gobble, gobble. You're gonna take your soul fighter. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Later. It's the X-rated Debbie Higgins. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no such thing as X-rated anymore. No. Just go no. With porn it's, uh, if we have to say the F word three times to get the R. So there we go. Okay. Put your turkey down. I love Steve Martin and John Candy. Yeah. I, I remember Steve Martin from his SNL days. Two wild and crazy guys. Yeah. Um, and with, remember when he played the guitar and have the arrow through his head and all that stuff? Yep. And this was a different role for him because usually he's doing something comedic. This was like comedic, but also serious at the same time. Yeah. Because he's playing the straight guy. And, you know, John Candy's playing like the buffoon. Little Costello role. The and, buffoon. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is kind of different for a Steve Martin. I, I, gotta I, say I, I love them in, actually even in his later movies too. Yes. About Steve Martin, which I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. He started at a comedy troupe at Knott's Berry Farm. Did you know he was a writer for the Smothers Brothers Comedy no, Hour? No, I didn't know. I couldn't believe that. No. I said, you know, Annie wrote for Sonny and Cher. I did not know He that. was the writer for those two shows. And I know maybe people don't know. I know they know Sonny and Cher's show because Cher's still around lurking yeah, about. Yeah, you might not know Sonny. But Smothers Brothers were like this weird, you Poor know, Sonny. Sunday night. These were always Sunday night shows, comedy shows. Sonny hit a tree. You know that, right? Yes. <laughs> not skiing. Kidding. So skiing, it, right? Skiing, yeah. It went a little too fast. And that tree got in his way. I kid you not. And look up for you Cher fans that may be of a, a Gen Z or millennial age. That don't realize she, she was married to Sonny Bono. Yeah. Look that up. It's fascinating how they Yeah, and they would always like do comedy skits and they would sing a song like, I got you, babe. And then they so do we a just comedy went skit. Through the one way on the highway, like John Candy and Steve yeah. Rogers. So let's yeah. go back to the movie. Right. And so the cast, John Candy. I'm a, f I can't say I'm a f huge fan of John Candy. I always liked his stuff. Yeah. But there are people out here who love him, like from Spaceballs. Uncle Buck. I yeah, mean, Space Wolves was funny. I always thought he was a great comedian, comedic mm -hmm. actor. Unfortunately, he passed away at such a young age from a heart attack. Well, he started with a comedy troupe. He's out of Canada. Correct. And he was in the Second, Second City, City, which yep. was very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Second City was like a cerebral comedy group, kind of like how Monty Python was. Mm -hmm. It always appealed to people that were of higher caliber mm -hmm. intelligence. It was slapstick, but superior. And what I didn't know is that, you know, I always wonder why he didn't appear on SNL. And it's because he didn't want to leave Second City. He felt loyal to, yeah, yeah. to them, right. um, which was the reason why he never And appeared. Steve Martin was on uh, SNL 15 times. But I want to say something about Steve Martin. He was a good dramatic actor. Mm -hmm. And two movies that I really liked that Steve Martin was in, one was Leap of Faith, where he was a, a preacher, mm -hmm. a, a fake preacher, like right. one of those tent guys. Really good movie. And a funny, funny comedy that I loved that he did was Bowfinger. With oh. Eddie Murphy, really funny stuff. Some cameo appearances in this movie. Ben Stein, oh, he, was, yeah. he was at the Wichita Airport clerk. Kevin McKeon, do you know who that is? Yes. Squiggy. Yes. From Laverne and Shirley. Yes. Watching him like, wait, that's Squiggy. It's funny that you sort of like- Was he in Spinal it. Tap too? Yes, he was. Yes. He was in That was Spinal one of his Tap. big movies. He didn't have yeah, too many Christopher movies. That was one of his film. notable yeah. movies. And also the film debut of Dylan Baker, who people don't know his name ever, but they know his face. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, he's been in a million movies. He's a great character actor. Jerry Ryan, for all you nerds out there, was supposed to appear in this movie. She did appear. Jerry Ryan, who appeared on Star Trek Voyager. She was in the bus scene. Remember when we were singing the Flintstones? Oh, yeah. That scene that we were all... She was in it, but because she couldn't stop laughing because back and forth between Steve Martin and John Candy was so funny, she, she couldn't shut up. She just kept on laughing. So literally, they had, they had to redo the whole scene because they couldn't use it because she was in the movie, but then out of the movie because she couldn't stop and keep her mouth shut. I guess their ad libs off screen and off script were funnier than the movie yeah. a little bit. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> um, this movie was originally about three hours and 40 minutes. Some people oh, said it was more than four grief. hours. Yeah. And some people said it was a little bit less, like 150 pages script. Right. Uh, Steve Martin was telling John Hughes, you need to cut this down. They tested this with so many audiences till they finally put out the final version. It got, I think it was down to like an hour and 30 minutes mm -hmm. the movie time. One of the things that happened during the final screening, which I thought was pretty hilarious, uh, one of the actresses, her name was Deborah Lamb. In the scene where the car burns up, they have the highway scene, the cigarette burns up the car, part of the movie where they go to a strip club. Now, you never saw that because that was deleted. That was part of the three hour plus movie. Oh, Lord. The, in the strip club, this, Deborah Lamb was in that scene. She goes to the premiere. She doesn't know they cut her out, thinking, oh, I'm in a movie. And she watches it and she's not in it. So no one told her. 
I thought that was like kind of like amazing, like being an actress. That's got to mean. That's got to be pretty pissed Especially off. Especially when you bring your friends or talk oh, yeah, come you're on, in a see movie. me. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Not there anymore. Oh, a lot of deleted crazy. scenes for you big fans of this movie. Tons of scenes you can find on YouTube. They were on DVD, some of the extras that they put on DVD. Mm -hmm. um, so you can definitely see some of the movie in its original three hour in pieces. Uh, from things they cut. Do you know this is jo this was John Candy's and Steve Martin's favorite film that they ever did? Yeah, they Which loved like, it. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why Steve Martin chose the movie because he liked the script so much. Yeah. And one of the reasons why John Hughes stayed as director because originally he was giving it to someone else. And then yeah. when he locked in Steve Martin, he's like, no, I want to work with this guy. I want to direct, not only write, but also direct. It makes people happy. Movies are just to amuse people. Mm -hmm. And when you get down to it, there's movies I've absolutely hated. Mm -hmm. But if people really love them, like say Dirty Dancing is one, if it makes people happy, that's what movies are supposed to do. Yeah, so we're also so what I we mean, think it's success, a success in that aspect. So you can't denigrate everything just because we don't like it, you know. And it is a Thanksgiving movie, so albeit, let it. Play so we on should write a Thanksgiving movie, and we'll be geniuses there you go. because there's not many. Out Let's there. talk about um, the director because yeah. he was a big deal. Big deal. One thing about John Hughes that I found really interesting, of course, he did a lot of movies like Uncle Buck, The Breakfast Club with the Rat Pack, Ferris Bueller, which mm -hmm. a lot of people love, Beethoven, the dog film with the, you know, Home Alone 2 and 3. He started doing Virginia Slim's cigarette mm, commercials. And Virginia Slim's is a real cool cigarette when ads were on TV. You know, they had them on TV. And what he did was he insinuated himself into the business because he went to New York. He visited the National Lampoon office, right. which of course everybody knows National Lampoon right. from. Do you know it if you don't Animal look it up. House. I mean, come on, everybody knows that. It was such a great film. And we're of a different generation, Deborah. Well, I mean, people, but Animal House, that, that's transferred down. I mean, that's that's a great film. If you don't know what knows. we're talking about, please look it up, because National Lampoon's movies are hilarious. Yeah, they are hilarious. And he, and he negotiated a position, and he was a contributor to the magazine. And, you know, he made actually, there's I love Sixteen Candles. That's one of his movies oh, I do love. Oh, it's my favorite. And he made Molly Ringwald, who was just in the Truman Capote thing on mm -hmm. FX, mm -hmm. and she played... Um, What's it? Jo uh, Joanna Carson, mm -hmm. one of the swans. He made her a star. And I never thought, how could she be a star? She wasn't that pretty, but he made her a star. Mm -hmm. So she was like an average red haired girl. And she's girl. part of the uh, Brat Pack. So, I mean, you know, uh, the, he did a lot of these movies. He was a big thing back in mm -hmm. the 80s. Interesting to know that. I didn't know he was the director. I didn't watching all these movies in the eighties and oh, then beyond okay. on video. Mm -hmm. You know, go to Blockbuster Video or Palmer Video <laughs> for those that know what Palmer Video is. You know, and I, when I watched this, I'm thinking I was expecting my expectations were high, and yes. I was just let down like the plane. Exactly. Crashing. And he originally wanted Tom Hanks to play mm -hmm. the role for the the Steve Martin mm -hmm. role. And get this, he wanted John Tra Travolta, Travolta for yes. Del Griffith. How bizarre and is John, that? John Candy's role. Yeah, and I how would the, how would it, Travolta? It would have been bizarre, especially because at the time Travolta was still doing like you know normal films before mm -hmm. he got like strange. Mm -hmm. I, he's like a little strange these days. Um, and Hanks couldn't do it because he was filming big. Yep. So that was a big thing. And they didn't want, Tra Paramount did not want Travolta in the movie because he was considered after a time period, box office poison. Mm -hmm. Then he came back and he did like General's Daughter, I think was called stuff like that. So Travolta? another thing you can tell that I, about this. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, Pulp Fiction too. Well, Tarantino always loved to give people second chances. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I love about, the one thing you can tell about movies from the 80s, you can always tell, even if you don't look and see the year, from the music. Oh, definitely. The, the music is mm -hmm. so 80s in mm -hmm. this. And I guess I don't even know what started that. Miami Vice, who the hell knows? Right, right, right. But 80s is so distinct with the hairstyles, the clothes, and the music. Right. And it wasn't a great time, I don't think. But the I 80s? Through, I love the 80s. Yeah, but like me, I had like the, you know crazy hair. I look back at pictures of me oh, yeah. in the 80s. And, I go, and, and, Jesus and Christ, how could pads, you dress like big that? Hair. I, I look like a nut. Neon. You know? I thought I looked good. I looked like a crazy person back then. The music. Let me just touch on that. So here I'm I'm loving the music. I don't know if you realize Red Rock. You know, that, that they played that music. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da. I didn't realize. I'm like, I know that song. I know that song. It was a synthesized version of Red Red River Rock that Johnny and the Hurricanes did back in 1959. Ew. Elton John was supposed to have a movie in there. A movie. A song. Sorry. A song. Elton John was supposed to have a song in there. Yes. Paramount wanted 
full ownership of his song and they wouldn't right. give it to them. So it never appeared on the soundtrack or nor in the movie. And it's okay. never been heard before. So it's one of those like lost songs that we right. never hear about. The funny thing about it is if Neil and Dell, the two main characters, mm-hmm. just stayed at the airport, they would have made it back to Chicago in time. A scene played shortly after Neil's wife was watching TV and watching it saying O'Hare Airport was free and clear and the planes were going. <laughs> so if they just stayed, they would have been fine, you know. And Steve Martin had a big fight about Paramount because they cut a scene out Mm -hmm. at the end that John Candy said. Steve Martin thought it was so interesting and so heartfelt Mm -hmm. that he was so pissed because he had a lot of power back then, Steve Martin. And he was upset with Paramount and he he remained mad at Paramount until they mended fences, giving him the job in Leap of Faith, which was a 1992 film. And it was five years, five years he was pissed off at Paramount, didn't want to work with them until they gave him that part. The movie made $49.5 million out of a $15 million budget. So it was a box office success and even more so after video sales. Yeah. But I'm going to share some more trivia. It's time for you to time destroy for me. To, me, test to destroy your... me. Exactly. Yeah, so this one get I take ready. A drink. The destroyer is coming. Even this Have a sip. Too strong. This is strong drink. This and is... I can't put my tongue in it. He does this now. It's so low. I can't do You've it. You've got a long tongue. Unless I go to the circus world and work. Here's our Mike Joe's thing for you, Debbie. John Hughes was known for leaving Easter eggs in his movie. Do you know what an Easter egg is? I, I Yes, I do. Easter eggs were like little cues of things that represented something else that showed the the style of the director or something Mm -hmm. that people would look for in a movie and see it and go, aha, that represents something else. Okay, well, that wasn't the question. That's only the description. You got to part one. Part two is there was a reference to another movie in the car that they rented in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So the car was a reference to what? I can't remember because I blocked this movie out after I watched it and I never want to see it again. And Debbie got it wrong. It was, the car has a Griswold reference from National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah, that's probably when I was petting my cat and I just didn't look up. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) pet that cat. Well, I got 50%. Yeah, sort of. That was just a lead into the question. Okay, well, for you you audience members, now it's your turn. If you know the answer to this question, type it into the comments below on YouTube. And the first one to guess right, we will give you a shout out in a future episode. So here you go, audience. Oh Debbie, boy. don't answer the question. I'm never going to do it. Okay. In Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Neil's wife is watching a John Hughes movie that would not be released till a year later. What was that movie? Answer below. Don't say anything. We'll be looking out for your answer. Mm. You think I'm that bad when you tell me not to say something? I I'm gonna start talking you, like you know? crazy. I'm not that. My memory's not one you second. Sure? Yeah, so really. Okay, number one, The Odd Couple, 1968, starring Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. A New Yorker recently separated from his wife moves in with his best friend, a divorced sports writer, but their ideas of housekeeping and lifestyles are as different as night and day. Okay, number two, The Out of Towners from 1970. Ohio sales executive George Kellerman, who is Jack Lemmon, who we love, accepts a higher position within his company and travels to New York City with his wife, Gwen, who's played by Sandy Dan. Dennis for his job interview. Things start badly, but only go to startlingly worse in this Neil Simon classic comedy. Okay, number three, My Cousin Vinny, oh, 1992. One of my all-time favorites. Two New Yorkers accused of murder in rural Alabama. One's Ralph Macchio, believe it or not. While on their way back to college, call in the help of one of their cousins, a loudmouth lawyer with no trial experience. Number four, Home Alone from 1990. An eight-year-old troublemaker mistakenly left home alone by his parents, must defend his family domicile against a pair of bungling burglars on Christmas Eve. All right, number five, Tommy Boy. I love this movie. I think it's funny. After his auto parts tycoon father dies, the overweight, underachieving son teams up with a snide accountant to try and save the family business. It's hilarious and cleverly slapstick. It stars the late Chris Farley, who was another Mm. heavy comedian who would just jump all over and passed away. An SNL alumni David Spade. And Hmm. those are my watch list. A little side note, there was talk of a remake for Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. 
Okay. With Will Smith and Kevin Hart? What do you think? No. I, I think well, that would be a terrible first of all, remakes idea. of anything now are terrible. I can't... I, but I, I have an alternative idea for any of the major film production companies out there. Yeah. Instead of doing Will Smith and Kevin Hart, I suggest Will Smith and Chris Rock as Neil and Dell. Then people would watch now it. Now that I would see. They would watch it. So why do you? Why should people watch this after we've trashed this well, sucker? Well, watch it because a millennial, late Gen Xer. Why I voted the way I did, predictability. I Again, I could have wrote this. I didn't think it was that funny. When I look at, I love the actors. I just didn't like this movie. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you know, I, I look at this movie and I think, you know, the folks that like this movie, my hat's off to you. But if you think that this was a classic comedy, you probably think Olive Garden is like great Italian cuisine. There you go. Well, I think the core theme is all about family, loneliness, homelessness, empathy, and how you need to walk in another person's shoes. But I think people like it because it stands the test of time with little cliches and more about the personality of the characters. But two great comics that people did really like and they were at their peak and loved by the public. Plus, it's a Thanksgiving film. We have so few and we're bombarded at that time by Christmas movies. So I think that's why people like it. So Debbie, as I'm looking at my magic eight ball mm. and wondering where we go next, my magic eight ball is not working. So Debbie, where are we going next? Well, I hope we go someplace better, but we never know where we're going, Joe, until we go there. Take note of this day when we said, this is when we make the big bucks. Because when we make the big bucks and we're not delusions of grandeur, <laughs> we'll go, oh, I remember back when I knew this is going to be great. <laughs> We're all going to make mega bucks off this. Okay, chat. which one do you want to pick? I don't know. What are we doing? Okay. Um, well, we're going to do the old yellow one when we do old yellow. Oh, yeah. We'll do the old yellow when we do the old yellow. I'll do, how about Joe going to the bathroom? <laughs> what, leaky sink? No, hey. I go, hey, you go to the bathroom oh, you're way too much on the show. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. I like And when Phyllis. you're a billionaire... Billionaire, get it? Billionaire. I like Phyllis. Oh, <laughs> Be with us. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> you really kick my ass, you know? Did you like this movie, Bill? <laughs> Bill, do you? I really hope these jokes are funny. Bill, do you like this movie? Yes. Did you like it? Yes. Oh Christ! <laughs> you did? Oh, God. We need to bring him in the shot next time. Yeah, I know. He gave it an eight. Wait, what's yours? Nine. That's right, you said nine. Right. <laughs> four. Four and four five. The last one you gave to was Winnie the Pooh. I know. Like, what the fuck? You suck. Fuck like it. Oh. This was a torture. You just put the this was, this on okay. You go to the bathroom way too much on this show. Hey, it's my American right to go where, when, and how I want to go. <laughs> yeah, but when you go, you're a European. You're European. No, you fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good up until that point. Okay. All right. Let's do it again. Great director of comedy. <laughs> you should act like you're getting up to go, too. Oh, we should do snot one. Snot you should out. start it with Deb. I got to go to the bathroom. Huh? You should start it with Deb. I got to go to the bathroom. Okay. You know? Mmm. Man, Deb, I got to go to the bathroom. Joe, you go to the bathroom way too much on this show. Wait, it's my right as an American to go when, where, and how I want to go. Yeah, but when you go, European. All right, All right you, guys you made it. Question? Yes. Uh, this is a question. Oh, it's a deb. The review of the Revenant. <laughs> 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 you, you have no way of knowing what's going to happen with this question. <laughs> Kevin Noriski six seven eight three asked you, Deb, are you wearing a wig? Yeah, yeah, I had the wig on. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, Kevin, I'm, I'm not going to say Kevin Zaritsky. Nor, Norisky6783. He's one of our followers. He follows us. Yes. I don't know Be who nice it to is. Kevin. What? Be nice to Kevin. He follows us. I'm just going to say Kevin. I'm not going to say the whole thing. I can't remember his whole camera, nom de plume. So, Kevin, I got your question. And for the Revenant, yes, I did have a wig on because I was being a school marm from back in the day. So believe me, that isn't my hair. And later on, I think I took it off and I did some rants, but yes, it was a wig. Kevin, I thought it was real. I'm with you. Oh, come on. <laughs> and if you're out there, you're wondering, like, what the hell are we talking about? You disagree or agree? Throw in a question. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah. just maybe, just maybe, yours will be chosen at the next Real Watch This Plus episode.